Hello everyone, and welcome to WeBC. My name's Jack, and today we're going to be benchmarking the brand new i9-12900K against the Ryzen 9 5900X. Please can I ask that you like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video. We put a lot of work into this, and we have loads of 12th gen content on the channel right now, so please go ahead and check that out if you're interested. First up, we have Control in 1440p, and it's a close one. You can see the 5900X working a little harder than the 12900K, all in all. And we do come out with an average FPS of 129, 1% 1 of 107, and 0.1% of 99 for the 12900K, and an average FPS of 131, 1% 1 of 104, and 0.1% of 90 for the 5900X. In 4K then, and the opposite is apparent. The 12900K is working slightly harder, and the 5900X seems to be a lot hotter, despite the same cooler being used. This must be the work of the more efficient cores in the 12900K. Averages of 68, 1% of 58, 0.1% of 28 for the 12900K. Averages of 69, 1% of 57, and 0.1% of 19 for the 5900X. So here we have Cyberpunk 2077. Interestingly enough, you can see the 12th gen and the 3090 working a little harder than the 5900X and the 3090. But still, it's not getting the same frames, it is falling behind a little bit. Averages of 99, 1% of 84, 0.1% of 81 for the 12900K. Averages of 104, 1% of 84, 1% of 23 for the 5900X. 4K then, and you can see again that the 12th gen side of things is working slightly harder. And still getting 1 FPS overall, less. Maybe this can be improved with future drivers and a good BIOS update or two, but I definitely see potential here. Average of 69, 1% of 59, 0.1% of 14 for Intel. Averages of 70, 1% of 61, and 0.1% of 58 for AMD. Now into CSGO. And this is a more CPU involved game than you might first think. And interesting to study the utilisation between the two CPUs. So far, the 12th gen seems to have always been working slightly harder. Average FPS of 354, 1% of 119, and 0.1% of 29 for the 12900K. Averages of 320, 1% of 76, and 0.1% of 29 for the 5900X. 4K CS Go now, and the story is the exact same here pretty much. Full RTX 3090 utilisation for the 12th gen system, a bit higher compared to the 5900X system, and about the same CPU utilisation across the board. Average of 318, 1% of 146, 0.1 of 51 for the Intel. Averages of 282, 1% of 122 and 0.1% of 46 for AMD. Days Gone then. A brilliant game if you haven't played it already. We're getting pretty much the exact same system utilizations here, but the 5900X comes out on top by about 10 FPS here. Average of 141, 1% of 87 and 0.1% of 59 for Intel. Average of 151, 1% of 84 and 0.1% of 53 for AMD. 4K now. And you can see the roles are reversed. The Ryzen seems to be working a little harder to hold its FPS lead over the 12900K. The Ryzen is running way hotter, still as is the case in all the games we've seen so far. Average of 84, 1% of 65, 0.1% of 43 for Intel. Averages of 90, 1% of 62 and 0.1% of 26 for AMD. Gas Station Simulator now, and this game is terribly optimised. Brilliant, but badly optimised. You can see the usages all over the place for both CPUs and GPUs. I'm surprised it knows what to do with PC hardware at all. Average of 125, 1% of 85, 0.1% of 33 for the 12900K. Averages of 123, 1% of 64 and 0.1% of 28 for the 5900X. 4K gas station simulator. And it appears as though the 12th gen is coming out on top again with usage and temperature. We can see that the 5900X is very hot and working slightly harder to keep up. Average of 75, 1% of 56 and 0.1 of 29 for the 12900K. Averages of 81, 1% of 53 and 0.1% of 25 for the 5900X. New World now. And New World is a very CPU intensive game, especially in towns and cities alike. We see rather high CPU usages here, but again the 12th gen pushing itself a little harder and it pays off, because it does come out on top. Averages of 126, 1% of 72 and 0.1% of 57 for Intel. Averages of 121, 1% of 33 and 0.1% of 13 for AMD. On to 4K now. Still taxing on the CPU side of things, 
Still scared it's going to cook my 3090 like a very expensive fried egg, but the 12900K however manages to come out on top again. Averages of 127, 1% of 80, 0.1% of 67 for Intel. Averages of 111, 1% of 60 and 0.1% of 12 for AMD. Rust now, and we do love a good aim training server. Rust is a CPU intensive not just because it's multiplayer, but it involves a lot of physics and this particular server, a lot of player characters. We do get lower CPU usage than expected here though. Averages of 126, 1% 1 of 89 and 0.1% of 58 for Intel. Averages of 103, 1% of 67 and 0.1% of 27 for, for AMD. 4K Rust and the story is very similar. Fairly low CPU usage, but pretty much cranked on the GPU. Rust is about a 5 on the well-optimized scale if the scale went up to 20. It's pretty bad, but still not bad numbers here. Average of 105, 1% of 22, 0.1% of 7 for Intel. Averages of 89, 1% of 59 and 0.1% of 30 for AMD. Single core benchmarks on Cinebench here. And we can see that the 12900K absolutely comes out on top here. You can see the higher clock speeds performance cores shredding the 5900X's single core by just under 500 points. The scores read 1949 for the 12900K and 1478 for the 5900X. Brilliant. Multicore then. And you can see just the comparison footage here, the 12900K is shredding the 5900X. And shred indeed it does, even with the less powerful Atom cores involved. The final scores read 25777 for the 12900K and 2534 for the 5900X. What a score that is. That's just 5K off a 36 core Threadripper. Good job 12900K. And into the Blender render. <laughs> blender render. I never get tired of saying that. We see times of 1 minute 33 seconds for the 12900K and 1 minute 57 seconds for the 5900X. Quite a sizable difference here. Okay, so that was pretty much it for my 12900K versus 5900X benchmark. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video or found anything informative. Please leave your comments and thoughts down below in the comments section. Thanks a lot for watching. This has been Jack from WePC and I'll see you in the next one.